dream comes true. You could swim along the river, all the way to the sea. You could fly up in the sky above the clouds and trees. You could plant a flower garden up on top of the moon. You could swing through the jungle all afternoon. Wherever our story takes us, I can't wait to see. Yes, friends, come and read with me. It's online story and welcome to online story time at your Grand Rapids Area Library. I'm Miss Tracy. I'm Teacher Missy. And we are simply over the moon with excitement that you're here with us today. Hey Teacher Missy, before we talk about oh, that, that. <laughs> should we sing? Let's sing. All right. So, Storytime friends, I'd like you to get your clappers, whatever you're using for clapping. Remember, we talked about you can use your elbows, your knees, your hands, even your eyelids if you want to. And here we go. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. If you want to hear a story, clap your hands. If you want to hear a story, clap your hands. If you want to hear a story, if you want to hear a story, if you want to hear a story, clap your hands. Yay! How many hands do you have to clap? Well, I clap with these two hands. Oh. But I know somebody who only has one hand. Well, what could we do if we just had one? So they, um, when they clap, they oh. clap on their knee. On their knee. That's why I like to invite people to clap whenever you got to clap. Whenever you got to clap. Your even, feet, your knees. Yeah, even if you just want to say clap, clap. That yeah, works too. You, can, you can do words. That's that. right. That's right. So however you want to join us is how we want to see you. Now, Teacher Missy, what do you want to talk about today? So I want to talk about somebody that's got more than two M's. Oh my goodness. Do you see my friend on up here? Do you see him? Does anybody know what that is? I know that it lives in the sea or the ocean. It does live in the sea or the ocean. It has to be in salt water. Mm -hmm. And they can be really little uh -huh. or they can get enormous. Huge. Giant octopus. It's an octopus. An octopus. Teacher Missy, what does oct mean in octopus? Oct Octopus is the sea creature with eight, eight tentacles. Oh, so the so anytime you hear a word that starts with oct, it means eight. Yes, it does. Like an octagon is a eight-sided shape. That is very cool. And he has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one behind him. Mm -hmm. Eight legs. Can you imagine if he had to wear shoes? <laughs> He'd spend all day long tying your shoes. Ooh, that ooh. would be funny. It would. It's a good thing he doesn't have to because those tentacles are wiggling all around. They are, and they have suction. Yeah, if you, I don't know if you can see this story time, friends, because it's kind of in a light yellow, but there's suction cups in this picture, and the octopus uses that to help grab its food and to help move. It does, and, and they're strong. Those tentacles are strong, and those suction cups are strong. And something else about octopus, they are extremely intelligent, smart, smart, smart. Yep, octopus have found their way out of traps. They have found their way out of danger. Um, yeah, they're an amazing animal. I watched um, something one time on a TV show. It showed an octopus opening a jar. Wow. Open the jar to get the contents. And there was like a shrimp or something in there. It was amazing to see how he figured or she figured that out. Isn't it neat to learn about other animals oh, and how they I know. adapt? I know. So do you, have any, do you have any good books about octopuses? <laughs> of course I do. Miss Tracy. Yes. Check Tracy. out what my book looks like this morning. Oh, that's a beautiful octopus. Isn't that just amazing? I just love how they're just so interesting to look at. Did you miss Is this a nonfiction book? This is a nonfiction book. This gives us lots of facts. Oh, I like um, that. I like but it, it's a little bit storyish, but but it, it does it gives us lots of facts. The pictures, however, are are illustrated, not 
They're not true pictures. They're not photographs. They're not photographs. They are um, illustrations. But this is called Gentle Giant Octopus, written by Karen Wallace and illustrated by Mike Bostock. And it comes to us from Candlewick Press, and we're going to learn quite a bit about octopus in this book. A gentle giant octopus jets through the shadows. She's huge like a spaceship and her eyes glow in the water. Long tentacles fly like ribbons behind her. Silver-backed fish scatter before her. A wandering mother octopus moves through the water. Inside, she carries eggs. She looks for a den that is safe and well hidden, for a crack in a rock face or a hole under a stone. When octopuses need to move quickly, they jet backwards. Isn't that cool? Oh By God. sucking in the water. Vroom, they're like little, got like little motors. And pumping it out through a funnel light siphon. Isn't that, I just think that's so amazing. I'm still looking up floating. An octopus sinks like a huge rubber flower. Sand muddies the water as she lands on the seabed. Look at all, now you can see them much better in this picture. All these tentacles up and underneath, and they use those. They're just so cool. Looks like a kite almost. Octopuses use their tentacles like fingers to sense things. They use the suckers on their tentacles to grip things. Remember we talked about the jar top. Octopus, octopus eyes turn frontward and backward. Her tentacle sense a crab in the water. A tentacle searches, it stretches and touches. So we can't do that with our eyes. We can't, we can't move our eyes forward and backward. No, that is just amazing. Little unlucky octopus. Crab claws are very sharp. They nip at the tentacle. The octopus pulls back. The crab scuttles sideways and escapes in the sand. Do you think the octopus might have eaten that crab? Oh, and the octopus have to eat too. They gotta eat. A, a mother giant octopus slides over the seabed. Her body stretches like taffy over the stones and her skin ripples like seaweed. She's black as the sea kelp. The goggle-eyed octopus feels her way forward. Usually the giant octopus are kind of a reddish color, but when hunting or hiding, it can change to become oh. very dark. What's the word that means that it changes so they can hide? Camouflage. Camouflage. I didn't that. know an octopus could camouflage. I didn't know an octopus could camouflage either. Oh. So they can make themselves turn dark and they can kind of hide. I wonder what would eat a giant octopus. Something big. Yeah. But under a boulder, a wolf eel is waiting. His mottled gray face darts from the shadows and his teeth like daggers ripped off one of the tentacles. Oh no! Octopuses have eight tentacles, but a healthy octopus can regrow its tentacles if they get damaged. Wow. So, how cool is that? Wouldn't that be handy just to grow an arm if you need Yeah, to? Or finger falls off and you just get a new one? Yeah, <laughs> that doesn't really happen for us, does it? <laughs> then it sinks like a nightmare deep into its den. Wow, that is so interesting. If an octopus is attacked, it will squirt out a cloud of inky liquid to hide and get away. So it squirts this ink out and it clouds up the water and then they can make a quick escape. And whoever is looking at it or searching for it can't see them. That's another kind of camouflage, isn't it? That is, yeah. A frightened giant octopus squirts ink at the red wolf eel. She shoots back from the boulder, back over the seabed. She's pumping and sucking the sea from her body. Remember, they talked about how she that's just so amazing. A quivering giant octopus rests on a boulder. Underneath is a cave that is easily guarded. She squeezes inside. She drags pebbles all around her. 
her search for a home is over. There she is. Octopuses don't have any bones and they can squeeze right through the tiniest of holes. I didn't know that, mm -hmm. but they didn't have bones. Oh, that would make getting into a small area quite a bit easier. A mother giant octopus lays eggs in the cave. They hang from the roof like grapes on a string and she guards them from the crabs and nibbling fishes. And while her babies are growing, she never eats and she never rests. The female giant octopus will lay as many as 60,000 tiny eggs. Oh my goodness. Now that's a big family. That is. I'm assuming that not all of them will hatch. Probably not all of them will hatch, and I would imagine there probably are other predator sure, fish we, that we, might eat them. Yeah. Um, and after five months, take some five months. Wow. Um, the babies swim from their from their egg sacs, and they squirm and wiggle and jet through the shadows. And right away, they're sucking and pumping the sea from their bodies. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. So lots of other animals like to eat baby octopus. Sure. So only two or three of them survive. Wow. To become adults. Out of 60,000? Wow. A mother giant octopus rests in her cave den. She watches her baby swim through the water. A gentle giant octopus shrinks in the shadows. Her life is over when theirs begins. That was great. So there you go. 60,000 babies? Hey, story time friends. Hey, teacher Missy. Yes, ma'am. Guess what it's time for. Oh, please tell me it's the, it's the, it's flannel time. <laughs> Woo I'm so very, very excited. Now, story time friends. I had a conundrum this week when I was making our flannel today. And this, a conundrum yes. is another word that means a problem. It's not a super difficult problem, but it might be a problem you have to think about for a while. And I thought, how can I make my flannel board look like an ocean? And I thought, well, it's already blue. It's blue. That's very helpful. But it doesn't really look like an ocean. And I thought, well, I could try to put some waves on top. And I thought, well, probably don't need to do that. And finally, I figured out a really simple solution. I am just going to add some seaweed. Oh, Miss Tracy, what a great idea. And now we have changed a blue flannel board into the bottom of the ocean. And it was that simple. Now this has to be the bottom of the ocean because guess what? We have an octopus and we know where they live, right? They live in the bottom of the ocean. But we have some other animals too. And this is called Down in the Ocean. Uh, some of you may recognize this song, and if you do, please sing along with me. Here we go. Oh, I bet you teacher Missy needs some words. I, I, I already felt her kind of yeah. squint her eyes Squinting over at here. Her. <laughs> okay, here we go. Down in the ocean, early in the morning, see the little lobster crawling around. See the little lobster Crawling in the ocean, crawl, crawl, pinch, pinch, off it goes. And there he goes, there's our lobster. What else might live in the ocean? Maybe one of these, here we go. Down in the ocean, early in the morning, see the little octopus waving around. See the little octopus waving in the ocean. Wave, wave, squirt, squirt, off it goes. And do you remember when an octopus squirts? Yeah, it's like black inky stuff it squirts and it helps it to hide. Okay, ready? 
Down in the ocean early in the morning, see the little dolphin jumping around. See the little dolphin jumping in the ocean. Jump, jump, splash, splash, off it goes. I think he's gonna jump, I know. They Let's make it look like he's gonna jump out of the ocean. And they do. There we go. Now, how about one more animal that might live in the ocean? Okay, here we go. Down in the ocean, early in the morning, see the little whale looking around. See the little whale looking in the ocean. Look, look, swim, swim, off she goes. And there we are. We turned a flannel board into an entire ocean scene with just a few creatures and some seaweed. Hey, thanks for playing. Miss Tracy, yes, I have kind of a fun book now. Well, that was a great book too, but this is kind of a fun little story about... What is that octopus holding in his tentacle? He's holding a ukulele. What's a ukulele, teacher Missy? It's a small instrument in the same family as the guitar and the violin and the, it's a string instrument. Wow. And they have a very unique sound. They're kind of higher pitched and kind of a fun little instrument. I don't know anybody who plays one, but a lot of people do. I, I just don't personally know anybody. Um, he's also got a rabbit on one tentacle and a waffle. <laughs> a waffle? Well, we're gonna find out about this guy. Also, An Octopus is the name of our book. Uh, Maggie Takuda Hall and Benji Davis wrote this book and did the illustrations. And we're gonna find out about this octopus. I, I'm dying to find out about that. It comes to us from Candlewick Press. And I wanna see what he's gonna do with that ukulele. That's what I wanna see. Every story starts the same way, with nothing. And every story needs a character, any character you can imagine, like a little girl, or an adorable bunny, or better yet, an octopus. Of course. An octopus who, plays the ukulele. <laughs> but in order for it to be a story and not just an octopus, that octopus needs to want something like, like a sandwich. Uh, no onions, please. Or a friend. Oh, hello. Or a totally awesome, shiny purple spaceship capable, capable of intergalactic travel. But the ukulele playing octopus with intergalactic dreams just can't get a shining purple spaceship from, say, the drugstore. And just why not? Well, that would be silly. No, you're silly. And also, that would make for a very short, very dull story. And for the story to be totally awesome, as a purple spaceship, the octopus has to earn it by, say, building it. Out of soda cans and glue and string and umbrellas and glitter and waffles. Waffles? Waffles. I'm not really qualified to build a spaceship, but it does smell like waffles, so that, that's nice. <laughs> but what if the spaceship doesn't work? Then the octopus will try again, but this time with some help from that adorable bunny. Bunnies are, well, good friends are, are not really rocket scientists, not usually anyway. So the totally awesome spaceship isn't totally awesome yet, but it's certainly not capable, and it's certainly not capable of intergalactic travel. It's, it's just a big mess. Thanks anyway, Tom.
where Bunny's trying, though. By now, the octopus is starting to give up. The octopus feels heartbroken. As if the octopus will never, ever get on a totally awesome, shining purple spaceship and in flight of the galaxies. The word you're looking for is despondent. <laughs> what does that mean, Teacher Missy? He's so sad. Oh, He's just no. beside himself with letdown and heartbreak. So the octopus plays the ukulele because music, music is good for the heart. But as the octopus plays, a strange thing happens. The resolution to the story begins to take shape. People came to listen to the ukulele playing octopus. Look, he's peeking with one eye. Friends, strangers, lots of people. Look at all these people that are listening to him. And a few of those people, well, they were rocket scientists. <laughs> it's true. What a great coincidence. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Rocket scientists who don't just build rocket ships, they also play the saxophone, the tambourine, trumpet, and lute. So what happens next? What do you think? I just don't know. <gasps> Well, that's up to you. When one story ends, it's just making room for another story to begin. Hmm. How does your story go? Okay, story time friends. Are you ready to do a little scarf waving? I know, me too. I'm so excited about scarves today. I am going to use my red scarf. I'm going to hand Teacher Missy, remember her favorite scarf? Oh, it's my favorite. It's Mr. the green Thank one. Thank you so much. And if you do not yet have your story time kit, we still have some here for you at the library. So if you're anywhere close to the Grand Rapids Area Library in Grand Rapids, Minnesota, I want you to come and pick up your story time kit. Okay, our... Excuse me? I heard something. Oh, absolutely. Story time, friends. Zebra would like to be our story time friend today. Oh. Hello, Teacher Missy. Good morning, Zebra. Hello, story time friends. Your stripes are lovely this morning. Thank you very much. Beautiful. Okay, I'm going to sit right here while you guys wave your scarves. I love scarf waving. I love watching you wave your scarves. That was very kind, Zebra. Thank you. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is our scarf warm up. Are you ready? Here we go. My scarf. Oh, what happens if you don't have a scarf? Oh, we didn't even talk about that. You could wave a washcloth, you could wave a hand towel, you could wave a sock, you could wave a Kleenex, you could wave a paper towel, you could wave a big leaf from a tree, you could wave anything that you can wave in the air. I was actually doing some scarf songs uh, with my grandson this weekend and we were outside camping and we only had a plastic bag to wave but then his mother found a scarf. Okay, so you could even wave a plastic bag. Okay, here we go. You guys ready? All right. My scarf goes up, my scarf goes down, my scarf goes around, 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 around. My scarf goes in, my scarf comes out, my scarf flies about, 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 about. One more time. My scarf goes up, my scarf goes down, my scarf goes around, 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 around. My scarf goes in, my scarf comes out. My scarf flies about, 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 about. Yay! Okay, I have a brand new song for us today. And I'm kind of excited about it. And it's called Octopus. So we are going to turn our scarves into octopuses. Okay, so I want you to think of a, 
how an octopus moves through the ocean. And they're beautiful to watch. And here's how our song goes. Octopus, octopus, swim, swim, octopus, 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 swim, swim, swim. Nice! Swim up, swim down, swim forward. Turn around, octopus, octopus, swim, swim, octopus, 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 swim, swim, swim. Those were some amazingly wonderful octopuses swimming. Should we do it one more time? All right. Octopus. Octopus, swim, swim, octopus, 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 swim, 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 swim up, swim down, swim forward, turn around, octopus, octopus, Swim, swim, octopus, 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 swim, swim, swim. Oh, I think my octopus is a little sleepy now. He's going to go into his octopus cave and take a little nap. Thanks for playing. Hi, story time friends. Teacher Missy. Yes, ma'am. What a great day learning about octopuses. They're just phenomenal creatures. They I could really not are. believe that an octopus could lose a whole tentacle and grow it back. What a great fact that was about octopuses. And then our poor octopus just wanted to fly into outer space. And I wonder in the end if he did. Do you remember at the end of this story, it says you could finish that however you wanted to, which is the great thing about a story. Yes. And so as that story ended, maybe in your mind, the octopus was flying away into outer space. You could start another story then. What happens when he gets there? I don't know. And then of course, we built a whole ocean out of a blue flannel board just by adding some seaweed and some critters. That was really a lot of fun. But now I think, Storytime friends, it's time for us to say goodbye. Would you sing with us? Teacher Missy, would you sing Let's with us? Let's sing. All right, here we go. Oh, it's time to say goodbye to all our friends. Yes, it's time to say goodbye to all our friends. Storytime is done today. Now it's time to go and play. Oh, it's time to say goodbye to all our friends. Goodbye, everybody. Pretend you're an octopus. Generation.